For this lesson we're going to be continuing with our look at right angle trigonometry. This is a very quick summary of what we've done before. When you do right angle trigonometry you want to focus on obviously a right angle triangle. Across from the right angle is the hypotenuse, that's always the case. And then within the triangle itself you're going to choose the location of what I call the angle of interest. So it can be either in this corner or this corner. It's obviously not here. This is a right angle, we already know that value. Then you're going to label your triangle based on this angle of interest. So for example, opposite to theta, opposite to the angle of interest, the hypotenuse is already labeled, which means the only remaining side is adjacent. And once I have that, I can use the acronym SOKOTOA to help me remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, some new terms that we're introducing here, because we're going to be looking more at word problems now. So, a couple of things we're going to come across. Angle of elevation, and sometimes that's called the angle of inclination. Elevation or inclination means going up. These are the angles measured above the horizontal. So you can see here, I've drawn a dotted line for the horizontal, and the angle of elevation is the angle from the horizontal to wherever it is that I'm looking. And then we have the angle of depression or declination. You're probably going to see elevation and depression more often, but inclination and declination come up as well. And here is the angle of depression. So my horizontal and I measure below. A common mistake that people make with this one is they measure these things with respect to the vertical. That is incorrect. They are both always measured with respect to the horizontal you may be given actual information. A question may give you an angle with respect to the vertical, but it's up to you then to recognize that, oh, I actually need to make my angle with respect to the horizontal. And that's a pretty simple thing to do because if they give you something with respect to the vertical, remember that the vertical and horizontal are at 90 degrees to each other. So you can just use the sum of these angles is 90 and so if you know this angle, you can find out what this angle is. So don't worry about that, but do pay attention. Okay, in general, a lot of the steps we take for word problems are the same even between different units. There are some details that change. This first one hasn't changed. If you can, draw a diagram of the situation. Identify the unknown or the unknowns that you're looking for. And in doing that, if you're using trigonometry, you're going to want to identify a triangle or multiple triangles. And for each of those triangles, you're going to want to label the opposite hypotenuse and adjacent sides with respect to your angle of interest. And your angle of interest might be something you're given, or it might be the unknown. It might be the angle you're looking for. And then once you've done that, figure out what trigonometric ratios you can use to find your sides of your triangle or your angles in your triangle or you might make use of the Pythagorean theorem or you might make use of the angle sum theorem which knows that the, all of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 and using all of these different strategies and techniques we are solving for whatever it is the question is asking. We might have to solve for different things to get us there. It might not be a direct step to what the question is asking for, we might actually have to solve for something in between and use that to find the final answer. So let's take a look at some exercises. This first one, fairly straightforward, a kite is 32 meters above the ground. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is put in the ground. We have the kite 32 meters above the ground. So from here, there's 32 meters. And above the ground means that that is 32 meters straight up. So that's a right angle. The string makes an angle of 39 degrees. So the string would be here making an angle of 39 degrees. How long is the string? So we want to know this length. So that's what I'm interested in. 
So from here, we take a look. Okay, so what do we have? If you need to, you could redraw this diagram. I think this one's pretty simple, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it as is. Here's my angle of interest. This is a right angle, which means that here is my hypotenuse. From my angle of interest across, that's my opposite side. And not the hypotenuse, not the opposite. Here is the adjacent side. And the other thing I'm going to do, let's take a look at our mnemonic, SOKATOA. And let's see what we have or what we know or what we care about, what we don't care about. So uh, let's see, we have here the opposite side. So that means I can put a check mark with the letter O. We want the length of the string, that's the hypotenuse. So I can put a question mark with the hypotenuse. And I don't care about the adjacent. I could. That means I could put X's here to say I don't care about the adjacent. And from that you can see just from the X's I'm not going to use this one, I'm not going to use this one, I am going to use this one. Another way to look at it is I have this one and I'm trying to find this one and I have the angle which technically means that I can find the sine. So let's write that out. The sine of the angle of interest which I declared was 39 degrees at least for now the sine of 39 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. That's 32 over L. And as you can see at this point, this is like examples we've already done before. I recall the fact, or I keep in mind the fact that this is over one, which is going to allow me to do a cross multiplication. L times sine 39 degrees is L sine 39 degrees. One times 32 is just 32. I divide both sides by sine 39 degrees, divide by sine 39 degrees, and I end up with L equals 32 over sine 39 degrees, and I can do that all in one step on my calculator, 32 divided by sine 39. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode and I end up with L approximately equal to 50.8485. That's to round it to four decimal places. This might be a good chance. We're back into word problems. Something else I've talked about with word problems is what's known as a sanity check. Does your answer make sense? So we have a cord, or sorry, we have the kite 32 meters above the ground and about 50 meters of string. Well, those numbers are about, you know, approximately similar sizes. So that seems to make sense. We're trying to answer how long the string is. Our answer will be in meters. So we should have a concluding statement here. Therefore, the string is, and we should round this further, I shouldn't keep that many decimals. I kept those extra decimals just in case. I think I'll round this to one decimal place. And so I will say the string is 50.8 meters long. So once we get past the actual diagram here into the actual trigonometry, this is the same as some simple trigonometry we've done already. Okay. Now we have a lighthouse observation deck is about 20 meters above sea level and a boat is viewed from that observation deck at an angle of depression of 6 degrees. How far is the boat from the base of the lighthouse? And when we say how far, this one is talking about what's known as a horizontal distance. And that's why they say from the base of the lighthouse. So that's going to, I don't want to make things too elaborate, but I, I want you to get an idea of what it is we're looking at here. So here is some sort, here's land, here's the lighthouse with an observation deck. So that's, there's a place up here that people can stand and take a look out. And then down here we have the water and it tells us that the observation deck is about 20 meters above sea level. 
So that tells us that the distance from the water to the observation deck is 20 meters. Now if someone is standing on this observation deck, it's saying the, a boat is viewed at an angle of depression of 6 degrees. So the way that I need to deal with that is I have to create a horizontal, because imagine that someone is standing up here on this observation deck. If they were to look straight out from there, that would be looking at the horizontal. But that's actually not where they're looking. Where they're looking is down towards the water. So they're looking down there, and the angle of depression goes from the horizontal to the angle they're looking at. So there is my angle of depression. So the first thing I want you to notice about that is that this angle is actually outside of the triangle. All right, so that's a diagram. It's not, I'm not going to claim it's a particularly nice diagram, but I think it illustrates the situ situation pretty well. Let's try to clean that up a little bit. So let's do another diagram like that. We know this side is 20. This lighthouse is 20, or the observation deck is 20 meters above. That implies a right angle here. We want to know how far is the boat from the base of the lighthouse. So I'm going to call that D for distance. So that's what we want to know. But how do we incorporate this 6 degrees? Well, what do the horizontal and the water have in common? They're both horizontal. They're both flat. This line is parallel to this line. And so I actually have that Z pattern that we've made use of in the past. So this 6 degrees is actually here as well. So this horizontal line is parallel to this line. We have a Z pattern here. So that means I actually do know an angle inside my triangle. And so that is going to be, I'm going to make that my angle of interest. Here's my right angle, which means this is my hypotenuse. From the angle of interest over here, that's opposite to the angle of interest. And this is... adjacent to the angle of interest. So let's go up here and do Sokotoa. So what do I have? First of all, I've got the angles. So that means I'm going to, you know what, I really, I think I'm going to modify how I do this. So because I have an angle of interest, that means I can find the trigonometric ratio sine, cos, or tan. I can put that in my calculator. I have the opposite side. So opposite and opposite. And I'm interested in the adjacent side. Adjacent and adjacent. And so if we take a look here, which one, where do I have all of the information that I need except for the one thing I want? That would be tangent. So that's what I'll be using. So the tangent of 6 degrees is equal to, the definition is opposite over adjacent opposite which is 20 over adjacent which is the horizontal distance that we're trying to find. This is over 1. You don't have to always put this over 1 but I'm doing it there to make sure this is clear. D gets multiplied by tan 6 so we get D tan 6 degrees. 20 times 1 is simply equal to 20. This time I'm not going to show the division, but I'm going to tell you I'm dividing by the tan of 6 degrees. So D is equal to 20 over the tan of 6 degrees. And now I'm ready to go to my calculator. Complete this in one step. 20 divided by tan of 6 degrees is equal to 190.2. Two eight seven three rounded two eight seven three, and that is the horizontal distance. And again, just look at the numbers. Twenty meters up, it's a pretty shallow angle, which means this is actually pretty far away. So about one hundred and ninety meters does make sense. Therefore, the is it a ship or a boat? The boat. The boat is. 190 meters from the base 
of the lighthouse. Okay, let's do another example. This one's quite a bit more complicated, but it's complicated because of the setup required to understand what the um, what the diagram is going to look like. So we've got someone looking out the window of a building and, and if possible for this one try to imagine yourself in that situation. So someone's looking out the window of a building. Ray finds the angle of elevation. So angle of elevation means that Ray looks straight out from the building, looks out horizontally, and then measures an angle upwards to be 41 degrees. So that means that along this line of sight, so if Ray is standing here, then along Ray's line of sight upwards, there's another top of a building. The angle of depression to the bottom of the building, he looks down, and there's an angle of 54 degrees, and that is to the base of the building. So the idea is, what we're trying to do, is he looks up to the top of a building, and if I just extend this, and he looks down to the base of a building. So from his balcony, he looks out, and at the 41 degrees up is the top of the building across from him, and 54 degrees down is the base of the building. And we want to know what is the height of that overall building. So a diagram like this would be really helpful. And from this diagram, what you're actually going to do is you are going to focus on creating two triangles. You're going to have one triangle here. And you're going to have a second triangle here. And we're going to actually solve those two triangles independently but the thing that we're going to make use of is the fact that the height of this triangle plus the height of this triangle, those two things together are going to give me the overall height of the building. Now I've prepared this note in advance. I have a nicer diagram. Not because we couldn't work with this. We could. And if you're doing this yourself, you're going to have to. So I'd actually recommend now, pause the video. This is where you should be trying this on your own. But here, first of all, is a much nicer... Oh, I think I missed one piece of extra information. I did. The buildings are 50 meters apart. So if I had started trying to solve this, I would have very quickly found out that I don't have all the information I need. So this is 50 meters. From Ray to the face of the other building is 50 meters. That's important because that's what's going to allow us to solve each of these individual triangles. So you can see I've cleaned this up quite a bit. Here's Ray looking out his window. There's your angle of elevation, the red line. Here's your angle of depression, the blue line. 50 meters between. I'm going to make a triangle here and solve for the height of that triangle, H1. I'm going to make a second triangle, call it H2. Whenever we've had shapes attached to each other like this, I've recommended this in the past, which is, it's not a bad idea, to actually break these triangles into two different pieces and solve them <clears throat> excuse me, as individual problems. And so again, that's what I'm going to do here. So let's take a look at this first one. Hopefully I can manage this in the space I have available. So in the first one, and I'll work in red since the first one is this red line. So here's my angle of interest. Here's my right angle. I should always start with the hypotenuse. Here's my angle of interest. That means that's the opposite. And that means this side is the adjacent. Sokatoa, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. I have the angle. That means that I know sine, cosine, and tangent. I can get those from my calculator. I have uh, the adjacent. So check marks next to the adjacent. And I'm interested in the opposite. So question marks next to the opposite and I'm not at all interested in the hypotenuse. So X is through the hypotenuse. And from that, I've got an X here, and I've got an X here, but I have what I want right there. So I'm going to use tangent. So I'm going to say that the tangent of this angle, 41 degrees, 
is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite is h1, adjacent is 50. And now I'm going to cross multiply. This is over 1. So I end up with h1 is equal to 50 tan 41 degrees. And I can get an intermediate answer here, but I'm going to need to use this answer in another calculation. So very important that you keep some extra decimal places here. So 43.4643. 43, and that's now approximate. Let's move over to the other triangle. I'm going to work in blue this time. Here's my angle of interest. Across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle of interest is the opposite side, and then this must be the adjacent side. SOH, CAH, TOA for SOHCAHTOA. I can find sine, cosine, and tangent. I know the adjacent side, so that gets check marks. I'm interested in the opposite side, that gets question marks. And I'm not interested in the hypotenuse. And so actually it turns out the same combination as the first one, we're interested in tangent. So now once again, the tangent of this case, it's 54 degrees, is equal to opposite over adjacent. That is H2 divided by 50. So that's very similar to what we were doing before. Don't forget this is over 1. I cross multiply. I end up with H2 is equal to 50 tan 54 degrees. And H2 is approximately equal to 50 tan 54 is equal to 68.8191. 68.8191. Okay, so now I've got these two values. I've kept lots of decimal places so I could go ahead and combine them. The other thing I could do, so if I recall, so h is equal to h1 plus h2. I'm going to use that. I could put in these values. But let's say I'm worried that I don't want to lose any precision at all. There's another thing I could do here, which is I could actually substitute the exact values before I put anything in my calculator. And again, this allows me to do everything in one shot. So H1 is actually 50 tan 41 degrees plus H2 is 50 tan 54 degrees. And now I can do this all in one line. So I can say 50 tan 41 plus 50 tan 54 is equal to 112.2834. And that's very similar to what I would have gotten, if not exactly the same. It's actually, that's what I would have gotten. So I was precise enough here. And so the total height of the building, therefore, the building is 112.3 meters tall. So this was optional right here. Didn't have to do it that way. It didn't really pay off in this case, but there are times when that might be the way you want to do it. We should always be aware of how the work that we're doing, the way that we're doing things, any rounding that we're doing, we should be aware of what effect that could have on precision. Let's see if we have any more examples here. No, we don't, that's it. So that's it for our examples on word problems using trigonometry and there's some assigned homework.